and we are live. It's been a while, but VOYI launch party. Got the shirt. Got the shirt <laughs> there. Done that. It's shipping. Yeah, we all we all finally have production boards in hand with a nice attached antenna. Would you look at that? Very happy about that. Yeah, don't yeah, don't try to sell the antenna. It's already attached. So. It's it's available. It's it's been selling out slowly, but the stock's coming back in. Um, one of all major distributors. Yeah, I think so far so good. We've gotten we've gotten pretty good feedback on it. People are starting to use it. There's still always work to be done, but it's been kind of a fun experience, especially on the development side to actually play around with it and make demos of it. Um, it's been super easy to make demos. I think there's just there's there's a lot of low hanging fruit to to go and 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 tackle. But I've been having a lot of fun with just how easy it is to get something started. Robert and I are playing with the NVMe hats always. Those are fun. Do all just do all the little adapters. Yeah. Poe. Where did you find the tool? Is that a what what key is that? That that one. It's a it's a regular E.2, and then that's a 2280 with a little adapter because I think the the board itself was 2240 or something. So the really early NVMe adapters. Oh, and then oh yeah, look at that. You can use the Pi one too. Those work. Yeah. Try, trying to get that AI inference engine to work, but this this one kills display right now. You can get this driver loaded, but you lose display. Yeah. So we're going we're going through the testing of all the hats, all the fun stuff. The POE confirmed to work. When VME works. But I've had the best luck with this POE hat from Waveshare. So I've been playing with all the POEs. This one doesn't get warm because there's a nice fan on it. This one there's no fan, so don't yeah, this still gets a little warm, but yeah, it works fine. Now that now that it's released, Jason. Now that the board the board is out, it's in people's hands. What's the next step? What's your view of where you want to take this board? What are we driving towards here? What's the What's her end Yeah, goal? I mean, there's all the other distro images, right? So we've been having a lot of fun with the BB Imager. And so that allows you to get going a lot quicker because you can always kind of fetch the latest image without having to go to the website, right? So it pulls it straight down into the Imager and programs the SD card. And we've kind of got a regular, regular updates going on that. I need to clean up the graphics here a little bit, but yeah. See, that's July 3rd, doing regular updates on that. I'm still working on the process of making it where third-party contributed images, like we have a way to kind of filter and bring those in, right? To get all the other distros, like to like get a, a home assistant image up there, right? So people could just flash immediately a home assistant or the one of the the, the Raspberry Pi, the, the, the Pi, retro Pi images. And then we can see you got the Beagle Cades up there. I couldn't hear you. Oh, I was saying we have the Beagle Cades up there behind me. Oh, the Beagle Cades. Yeah. Yeah. So something to to load new images on the Beagle Cade, get the more with the the builder images, right? But making it easier so that we can add stuff to the to the to the list of images. I'm going to generally get people to register on the project side and then you have to kind of kind of state their ownership of particular distro and then link to link back to that right so that we can kind of have some consistent ownership of of different distro images right obviously robert owns the official beagle debian images and so those are what's going out right now yep and i guess we should explain we should explain right now why there's kind of two images right so we have kind of we have a stable release image and then we have a beta image so robert if you want to if you want to kind of explain the reasoning for that this time around compared to, to what we normally do we do. I mean, you so know, right, it's, it's, it's the empty cinnamon, cinnamon story. Oh, oh, yeah. I was going to say right now with the YA, we're still changed a lot. So there'll be a new image this Wednesday morning. So it's basically a weekly updates with the YA right now. But I need to add the cinnamon image right now. It's just XFCE. The cinnamon image actually has Wayland support. And you can actually fire up Firefox and type in Quake WebGL and play Quake on it. Now, something that just happened within the last couple of weeks, if you follow the Mint guys, they have Cinnamon 6.2 already, and they're planning to go stable with that on 22.04. So our Cinnamon's based on 6.0, and 6.2 has been just recently merged into Debian SID. So in the next week or two, we should be able to backport 6.2 into our image too. And maybe that'll fix some of the weird issues we had in our ex experimental image. But So yeah, hopefully in the thing, yeah. Yeah, so, but yeah, acceleration out of the box with the cinnamon image. The regular XFC image, CL works, so CL info, you can run your open CL stuff that uses Imagination's uh, coprocessor or GPU out here, but no 3D acceleration in XFCE yet. So it's all it's all Wayland versus Xorg. Yep, one more one more open source argument, but that's the fun, fun side consequences for that. But 
yeah, so that's those those two are out there, and then okay. things like yeah, like some of the Big- gaming focused distros are going to be open GLES out of the box. So less of a concern there for, for those. Yeah, and I think that's where the, a lot of the the, the simplicity is going to be driven from is when people can go to BB Imager and just select from a hundred different applications that are pre kind of pretty configured. I, I look at things like Beagle, the what's the privacy one that's got all the services set up. Anyway, there's like there's a bunch of ones that just like have like everything. I think of like Pi Hole or stuff like Pi Hole. But clicking on it, the Freedom Bone, yeah, Freedom Bone project. Are you familiar with Freedom Bone? It's a nice one because Freedom Bone lets people like it's got all the different services set up for it. There's a, a another fork of that one, but there's like getting some of these projects. So basically, they have mail clients or servers, mail servers set up so that you don't have to use like Gmail. You can just have your own mail server set up it's got a lot of the other kind of server utilities that you might use to to like take control of your web services rather than use third-party web services like uh, so uh, to own cloud or things like that i guess yeah yeah exactly hosting own cloud sort of stuff right so i think that's a good you're getting those solutions out where you can just directly set up your server and then including those setup scripts for moving everything to the nvme right because that's and giving that uh, large storage over and to the Express. There's some nice hats out there too. So you can do is multi gigabit LAN and whatchamacallit NVMe hats. So you can do both at the same time. Those are probably fun. Because you could do you could do like a little Proxmox server if you wanted to or something like that, right? You could do that blocking just to the passive. Oh, when you're talking about security too, with the direction Andrew has been playing with uh, Zephyr. You could pretty much run Zephyr on almost all the cores. So the out of box image, we have firmware for the R five and yeah, both R fives. Yeah, that's, so you that's get, been really fun. Sorry, go ahead, yeah, so you boot up, install your own version of Zephyr on multi, on multiple cores on it, and use MicroPython through Thony, and and that was a nice sprint by Andrew. We just got it working pretty quickly, and oh, it's installed by default. Yeah, and there's always the Arduino core for Zephyr as well that we can we can look at. So it's kind of a challenge yeah. for the, see if we can get Zephyr running on everything. So Zephyr booting up, Zephyr starting the A53, Zephyr running on all the DSPs, Zephyr running on all the R5s. You joke, but that's 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 just you being considered. It's not even, <laughs> which is it's great to see. It's, it's excited that Zephyr and Zephyr's picking up as much as it is. And yeah, yeah uh, but so it, 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 it should be really easy. Go ahead. So I was, I was going to say the one thing you didn't mention about the VD Manager is just how nice the config stuff is. So if you don't want to change your config dot the text file in your uh, or your SD card your boot partition. Beam Imager does it for you, and you can set your Wi-Fi credentials, everything else in there, just without having to. Yeah, do you have a card loaded so you can show that screen? Because we're going to add uh, some extra buttons. I actually there. don't right now. Yeah. I don't have a card loaded, so if I, I, I bring it up, it's not going to point to the right things. I think I should go up showing it working. <laughs> yeah, once you get to that that config screen, right? So we're, we're actually going to add some check marks for some of the other boards, right, to allow you to do the flasher images for boards to have the onboard flash. Like one of the goals I have is to try to get it where people doing NVMe drive setups, right? So how do we get that the ext linux.conf update, right? So that we can load the configuration that we want on, on boot, right? So I think that's kind of the next thing is is customization of the ext linux.conf. So you can, yeah. but we've got a number of different images, like it's the uh, 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 configurations, like for setting the DSI or setting the OLDI displays, right? So eventually we can put those all into BB Imagers and to BB Imager and get to the, able to get to the customers. There you go. Now there you go. Right. So yeah, being able to set, get you on the Wi-Fi right away, get the SS. HIDs in, but if you go into the options settings for, for now, right, these are, these are mostly uh, simple settings, but we can give a lot more check boxes here, I think, to, to go and enable things like, do you want it to flash the EMMC, uh, to, sorry, the NVMe or enable the DSI or some things like that. So I think we can kind yeah. of give some advanced options. Uh, a little bit overlay here. Yeah. So that the images can, can do what they want. Or write it, write a boot up, right? So this this is just requires a little bit of coordination between Robert and I. Things that are executed on on startup and things that are checkboxable and things that can write into the fat partition. So this is giving us a lot of flexibility to to get people the, the information they need kind of at their fingertips rather than having to go and and do a lot of hand editing. 
yeah, it's a it's a it's a big quality of life upgrade, I think. Especially because now you don't need to hunt down images anymore, right? You just it kind of downloads it for you. It's actually nice. I realized it it caches them too, so it's it's fast every. Yep. So if you do it again, just get the latest image, but it keeps all your settings around, and it pulls the keys for you too, right? So if it pulls your keys from your user account for the for the SSH authorized keys, so you can grab those real easy and give yourself a, a secure way to log in without providing password access. Yep. And this this is I mean we're, we're talking about Beagle Y right now mostly, but this is applies to all the boards actually. So if you if you have a play, if you have an A64, kind of same same logic follows. So what are you showing us, Robert? I'm showing uh, basically how what it does on startup. So yeah, so this does the configuration. So on first boot up you'll see it actually pull in my uh, configuration data. So we've added a, a new image type it's a sysconf image type so there's a sys sysconf script text file that that robert parses on on boot up and there we go now it's running so it's there changing the it. username yeah. and just right before that it's generating the ssh keys so fresh keys on boot up send the wi-fi send the host file so and sadly it's it makes it boot a little bit longer because it needs to reboot after it reset everything but at least first boot up it'll be personalized your image so now it's rebooting. I like this video too because you get to see the LED beside it, right? So we see when it first comes up, it com the and you boot it, it comes up red, red. But then as soon as the kernel starts, it goes to the the flashing green, and then you can see the pace of the flashing green, right? As it's doing doing more, the heartbeat goes a little bit faster. So you can kind of get a little bit of a feel for where it's having a workload. Oh, the resizing there is nice too. So now you're, you got a fully customized. Yep. It has your username, has your password. Yep. It's basically up and running. And is that over the, are you showing that over Wi-Fi? Cause it's got your, your Wi-Fi connection there too. That was just a demo I set up. So I don't think the Wi-Fi was set up on that demo. Uh, we were troubleshooting. What does the LED codes mean for a couple of users who didn't have a serial port? So it's kind of showing the background of what was going on. But as you can see in that too, there is a boot menu option just to flash the NVMe. So we've got it set up basically out of the box. You can flash it from user space in Debian or just plug in the Raspberry Pi serial adapter and tell it, hey, I want to run from the NVMe. It'll flash your OS right over. Yeah, and, it yeah. and next time it boots, it boots off the NVMe with your, your root files. It's, it's really nice. It works. I haven't had it fail yet. So. And one of the nice things, too, is I've added to the building. Once you've booted into the PC and making me, there's still a boot option to boot back on the old way. So if yeah. you're playing with testing different images, well, I want to update my SD card and then reflash the NVMe again. It's really easy to go back and forth. So right now, those options, though, are only available over the serial port, right? So you mm -hmm. need to have the, like, if you want to, if you want to go to the, the boot configuration, the, 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 the EXT Linux conf configuration, Right, so you you have the, the 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 several different options, but yeah, the the Pi debug debugger is the easiest way to get access to the serial port, and then that that allows you to get the the prompt. That's really really help new users right now until we get the display coming on in the bootloader. Right, so there's there's still a little bit more work before the the display comes up in the bootloader. Right now, it doesn't come up until after the kernel boots completely. Until yeah. actually the, uh, the the GUI comes up. And that's one of the, the crazy things. Like six months ago, this yeah, there was no patches for this board. I mean, we basically quick bring up 6.1 kernel. There's a lot of hacks to make it work. So if we don't have video boot up until it, it's way late. But yeah, it works. We're hoping with 6.6 .6, later this summer, we'll have full console boot, um, everything. So we have images to test for that now too. But yeah, right now there's no display that works in 6.6. .6, but the board boots, so... Right now we're shipping 6.1. It's working pretty good. Yep. And do we want to talk pin out really quick? Yeah. Yeah. So Andre, does someone want to bring it up? Yeah. So Andre's uh, pin mux tool. <laughs> Andre, you uh, you went to to pinout.xyz, and and said that that kind of that's the 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 best in class sort of documentation on using the pin headers, right? So using the hat connector on other boards and said, Hey, let's get that for, for Beagle Y AI. So now Phil, Phil guys did a great job with it on the original Pi. So super appreciative of his work, right? Hope that other people will reach out and sponsor his work. So I think I'm hoping everything's good. We've maintained all the links to, to, to thank him for his work and to encourage contribution and to point back to the original pinout.xyz. And, and now there's a a vanity link, right? So right now it's pinout.beagle 
y.ai. So I think that's the the homepage for the pinout tool right now. Yeah, correct. I don't know if we'll if your beagle y.ai.pinout.xyz is something we'll ever get to or something like that. I don't exactly know what the roadmap is, but right now, if you want to get to that pinout tool, pinout.beagley.ai, I can bring it up. Gonna bring it up, yeah, just because I have my all my recording stuff. Original. I might miss it. There we go. Let's see. Share screen. Let's share the whole screen. Which one? Not that one. That's you. Yeah, it's still, it's still kind of a work in progress. It needs, it needs more things added, or at least you can always add more features to it. Nishant was very, very nice and critical of it yesterday because he wants it. He wants he wants it to basically write the Vice Street files for him. He wants it to be system but it's not that. But it, it's useful. I think it's useful if you're trying to find the, uh, where a particular interface can be brought out. If you're ever trying to either use an accessory if you're trying to design an accessory. Honestly, I, I feel like it'd be helpful if you had this type of interface when you're trying to build a board, just because it, it kind of helps you visualize the, the pin muxing a lot better and you can kind of spot things that might easily be missed, like how many timers you have on what pins or, or things like that, like what's the easy frame. But in, in, in this, right, is like you can click on either on the bottom left or the top right, you can click an interface, like you can click GPIO or PCM or something like that. PCM for expert S. I think it just needs to have some of right the now. basic information for using the GPIO, and I think we'll get that eventually. Right, right now, there's a, a somewhat longer guide on using GPIO that this points to. But I'm thinking we're going to have a simplified guide here within this page at some point. Yeah, right. Just with the the simple command line Python code to to use this, right? But so yeah, so you got here's the the I squared S or PCM lines pwm as well all right so yeah that's a computer. good one because you also get the the chart there to see kind of how the peripherals map and this is just hard for pwm so if you're trying to to figure out what pwm peripheral to attach to what gpl pen you can you gotta look at that table there of course i squared c and i think we've this is what it's come Here's up some of that quite a bit basic so, information on current on i squared c uh pins two and three map exactly to the pi's number name so a lot of people question like where's my i squared c well that's i squared c one right there so yeah, but it's make, like there's three ice creams that are available that are here. But potentially. Yeah, I think we probably need to make that clear. List all the sim links because you can bring out three ice creams interfaces, but really, you should. I mean, most hats should just use GPIO two and three, so pins three and five. But then there's a, the the standard pie brings that, and then you also have GPIO zero and one, but those are only meant free from hat, hat detect. And same for us, right? So we have a bunch of peripherals that are on that share with that I squared C bus. Like you have the PMIC, you have the HDMI framer. So really, you're only meant to dangle a single E from at the end of that just to see what app you have available. And that's kind of the supported use case. But we say that if what you're doing, feel free to try it. But the, your board might not boot. You might get weird behavior. You have device conflicts with a PMIC. I try to avoid that. So yeah. But then Don't you can also the bring PMIC out, head. yeah. And that's then you, you also have that special I squared C4 that you can bring out. That's not standard for reply, but. We have it extra there because the muscles are available. Now, I guess that's one one nice thing as well. That's like if you're not looking for a specific interface, you're just kind of curious on different pins. If you click like, if you click a, a certain pin, right, you can see all the mux modes in it that are supported. So it's Alt Seven default MC GPIO, but you could also do I squared C on that port. Or when something that has a lot of mux modes, you can actually it it's kind of pin dependent. But there you go. Yeah, see that's an example where you have you can do your MKSP, you have a audio ref clock out. You have your PWM and you have your EQP input. Are there, so, are there, is there a good set of quadrature encoder pins? We need to add those. There are, yeah. So that's, it's, it's part of the list. We need to add to the interfaces list on, on what we actually support. Right now, it's just meant to be a close one to one mapping with the Pi. Cause the whole intent for this is right. So you have an existing Pi project, just kind of help you, help you jumpstart that. But yeah, then definitely we need to add those special interfaces. <laughs> I think yeah, one of the most important like things six. when you talk about GPIO and Pi compatibility, all the sorry, bro. all the GPIO values are the same too now. So you can use these GPIO get, find, and actually map your Raspberry Pi code to us. Yeah, I think that's super important to point out to people. And I hope we can get clarified on this this page, right? So when you do GPIO, you can use the same Python code for these pins, whether you're using Pi. A, or using a Beagle Y AI. And that's why we have we have a nice example in the docs showing how to do that with uh, one of the pins. But yeah, it, it goes across all of them. So I definitely think that's something that we can clarify here. And thanks to a, a nice patch by Nishan that does Command line. Yep. 
and those are work out of the box. Yeah. So you can do the same type of operation. I know these are just command line GPIO find operations, but if you do git line, there's a, a way to do a git line by the name. And so you can use the same name in Python to, to fetch the pen. Is that documented here? It might not be on that particular page. Nope, that's okay. I've given yeah, I've given the Python code a few times. So let me see if I can just make a direct contribution to the docs to give the Python version of that. Okay. All right. We're starting to fill out the documentation as well. And again, always happy to take any input on what people want to see first as far as what's what's kind of stopping them from 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 building projects right now. The the amount of feedback I've got so far. So definitely getting fee feedback from 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 folks what needs to be, but I'll I'll, I'll point out one area. We've now in the documentation got a direct provide feedback link. So this, and now you can just jump directly to, it's going to make me sign in. You got to, got to set up pass keys on there. It actually makes it sign in quite, quite easy. Does it, oh, does it, uh, it just lets you select sign in with pass key and it just it lets you just go through. As long as nobody's watching us live and has my password. So. I'm just going to assign this one to me, um, but you see it automatically fills in everything and provides references to where the issue is in, in the documentation. And so just to try to encourage everybody to give us feedback through the open Beagle collaboration tool, right? So, so that creates an issue in, in, in the documentation. Yep. We've got, so this is for the code. amazing docs side Does it, or to learn to program with, with Python. I just don't think it's the best. Language. Anyway, there's for the pinout page, it's a little bit different, right? So it says contributed open Beagle. We don't have the the automatic issue, but you can file issues right here for pinout. And of course you can also just fork it and provide fixes to this source, right? And this is uncomfortable markdown, right? Yeah. To make Andre happy. It's, he doesn't like restructuring the text. I'm warming up, but but I'll mark down hard. So one thing where we actually would like contributions uh, from both users and companies is if you click on the the hats and add-ons tab in the middle there. So we are going pretty, pretty much one by one, right? There's there's a there's a way you can contribute what hats you've tested that work. This page needs a little love, so feel free to feel free to contribute something you've tested and let us know. But this this page is very nice because you can actually see any kind of modification you need to do from stock software, from examples that the manufacturer may provide on their their main website. And you can also see when you click on a hat what pins it uses, which is nice. Um, so if you need to write an overlay or anything is this like the that. One that you um, use the uh, drink bot is this one No the drink bot uses the, the Adafruit version. So that one, yeah, it actually so is fun. Yeah. And we have a, there's an entire write up on the docs on how to use that specific hat, which I don't think is, I don't think that's going to take you to it. Unfortunately, I have not picked up that. Yeah. But if there's it's... an extra write up, we'll definitely want to get that linked here, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, my list of updates. I'll manually make an issue for you to close. <laughs> Thank you. So it might be nice to add the issue button to there as well. With it, with Open Beagle, there is a, um, um, a, a wait time for getting an account, unfortunately, because we're getting too much issue spam and, and people creating user accounts with, with spam links, but you can always re reach out to me on discord or I think anybody else that's Robert or, or Deepak, I think also have the ability to approve user accounts here for open Beagle to file an issue. So there might be a tiny wait, but shouldn't be too long. Yeah. We're always fighting spam. We have recaptures and all that fun stuff, but it's, it's back to mainly approving users on open Beagle. Yeah. So don't feel personal about it. It's just, well, yeah. The spam mm -hmm. guys just got better and better. And now we're all fighting it. That, that example of the person sending a captcha to chat GPT and chat GPT going, this is meant to thwart computers. But if a person was to read this, it would say, so. So I'm yeah, having this site super, super grateful, right. In, in creating it and hoping that uh, we can contribute back to the, to them, to the main project. Yeah. And eventually get all the other boards as well. So maybe you'll play would be an easy one to add. Probably it's just. The way that the site is is working and and get yeah, phil is working on like a, a revamped version two that's gonna probably be more 
friendly to edits, I guess, as far as how it's structured for different board form factors, things like that. So that's exciting. But in the meantime, this is going to be available. And once if he, if he does do a version two, we'll, we'll help port all the data back to it. So yeah, and this is this is definitely not a full list of hats we tested, right? This is just kind of where I where I got where I managed to document it. And then just need to add a lot more. Yeah, and like the the I know the POE hats aren't here. I don't know if that's because they don't really use any of the pen resources. So I know we've it's tested just, a lot more than these hats. Yeah, it's it's just a matter of time. I just I just haven't had a chance to go go through and just update that page, but. That's that's on the list. Definitely. So if anybody just, wants to add one, right, they can they can submit pull requests. Exactly. Request. There's, there's actually yeah, there's a way to do it in the draft section. It's it's documented the read in the readme how you're you're supposed to kind of ask for to add your own board. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's an overlay file. Okay. Kind of thing. So it's and do we have a number of the the ones that in the drafts already that people can kind of pull from and test? Yeah, it should be an under overlay. There should be examples already. I think or boards might be boards. No, yeah, there you go. Yes, there's a template and some some examples of stuff that got staged on pinout that never got fully merged. So okay, yeah. So that's that's pinout and that's exciting. So if people want to contribute or they have any feedback, that's going to be great. Beagle, I I also want to go to pinout.beagleboard.org. Yeah, that's right. I can I can make dot org work if we want. Yeah, but pinout.beagle.ai works great. So yeah. I think it might be useful to have it just work with beagleboard.org as well just to yeah and then we'll we'll add i need to we still need to add stuff like adding the actual register offsets or things like that the goal is right now it links you to trm if you want to do really advanced stuff but ideally you you shouldn't have to leave the site even for for small like device tree change type stuff so okay we should put a link to bb imager I, the for bb imager just before i forget about it i might bring up this page for folks right if they're looking for the builds of bb imager we have the mac and the linux builds up here we'll be doing windows builds very soon now it's <laughs> all working on and i'm going to convert these from dot devs right now these are dot devs that require qt to be installed in order to run Gonna do app image, right? So you could do, we could do app image or flat, and I think it's just uh, gonna be app image. Yeah. So there'll be uh, uh, you're, you're becoming a big fan of QT, are you, Jason? <laughs> I rejected explicit beat button. Where's my beat button? It's supposed to be staying <laughs> positive here. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the yeah, the any QT being... five. If there's any QT five developers, hit us up on Discord. <laughs> Anybody Thou shall not use it. QT five. I yeah, let, let us let us know what what antidepressant medication you're taking because it might be useful as well. It's it, it's just a, to me. I think the biggest issue is kind of the split that they've had with the open source community in general, right? Right. So things don't stay very up to date in the, the 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 distros, and and it's always a kind of a pain to use old code that's not well aligned in with the the distro so it's just and there's a specific company that likes to delete all windows builds they've done previously and yeah very hostile to people that wanted to use the older qt5 yeah packaging issues aside i mean it's it's coming along the utility itself is great and yeah hopefully some of the changes will actually go back to high imager as well and yeah yeah i think we can definitely have some useful contributions back to to to, to pi imager as there are some links here to you can find it that way. Um, that if you're on the BeagleBoard website, you can find the link to the BeagleBoard imaging utility. I think one of the big ones, right? I think you may be doing the the builds. It's a little bit it's a little bit difficult with you when you look at signing images, right? So obviously can't share share keys, but sharing a process for using those right now. The Mac builds without you building up on the machine that has the keychain on it. Really not a good way to do this. So, and then Windows, right? I think you've got Circle CI and some solutions that, that that provide this. But we're I'm actually trying to shift the building of Windows binaries actually to build them on Linux, right? So there's a nice tool MXE and OpenSCAD is using it, right? So I'm trying to shift both the building and the signing of Windows binaries to Linux, and then just go and test it at the end with with Windows. And I guess just to, just to kind of re refocus on Beagle Y really quick. But I guess right now it's a lot of accessory testing. We're starting to see people build things with it. We're starting to see people trying to actually bring it up. There's, there's always there's always questions, I guess. One of the one of the big questions we've had was, and I'll touch on this just really quick, was running like AI inference on it. So as of as of July 9th, we have the C7s up and running. They're they're passing tests. So we're working on some demos in the next coming weeks. I think we'll 
the next week or two, we should have demos up in the in the docs that people can use. And on the on the TI side, there's there's right now there's a big focus on basically cleaning up the entire stack so that we package it easier for things like Debian, which is going to make things nice in the long term for both Beagle YI and AS64 and every other board that uses the sevens. So that's that's always exciting. In the meantime, Robert enables the Coral driver by default. Be sneaky like that. Yeah, enable by default if you want to test. And then some of the some of the other kind of feedback we've gotten, right? So like the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi six is is working. Bluetooth, we've had people kind of ask, is is, is it BLE or Bluetooth Classic? It's it's BLE only, not Bluetooth Classic. So you can't do audio over the BLE chip by default, but you could always use an external like USB dongle if you wanted to do Bluetooth Classic. The idea why BLE is so this is like an embedded device, right? So normally you use, you use it for something like provisioning, where this is this is kind of acting as your your provisioning service over BLE, not necessarily doing any kind of high speed data. But you can use it for sensors, you can use it for things like that to, to talk back and forth. And you can't do audio over BLE, right? It's not that you can't do audio over BLE, right? It's just that a lot of the traditional speaker pairing doesn't necessarily use that. So it's certainly possible to do audio over BLE. And then other questions I guess we've had, right, has been I like DSI displays for the most part, I think have been have been fine. I have a Pi DSI display that I use all the time with it now. There's there's always the question of adding more display support. So we we do have other displays we've been testing around. So we've reached out to a couple of the more prolific manufacturers, I guess, just to see if they're they're willing to test their displays against Beagle Y as well. Just because a lot of them have done like a one time hacky job of like use a custom kernel version that that works for, for Pi. But it, it would be nice to just kind of have them just make generic overlays, right? If they have custom timings and stuff like that. And then CSI was another question that we get, right? So CSI right now is, it, it works in the sense that IMX 209 OVP640 should be working as far as at least still images go. If you install GStreamer, you should also be able to do that. That's kind of part of the whole AGI firmware stuff apparently that you need to bring in for GStreamer for the ISP to work over video. So that's that's also getting cleaned up this week but that's kind of like the last little little remnant bits i guess right there's still there's still little weird things like the hdmi framer needs to be plugged in when you start the board but i think robert you said that that should be better in 6.6 yeah actually i mean the 6.1 that we have is basically you call it a hack to make it work so it's kind of a miracle it works at all but yeah it's 6.6 later this summer should be in much better shape for video Fingers crossed. Yeah, it works great on the on the on the fan output. I the, the the tuning you have is perfect, nice and nice and solid of every fan I've tried. Especially if I have an extra like the pie when the pie boots, I think it's loud. The, the default. Yeah. Then last night I, I enabled more of the PWM pair. So for the last couple of weeks, you could only do single output, but with the overlays, I've now enabled some of the pair, all the pairs to work too. So there's a yeah. lot of so the high precision ones have a dual output option. So yeah. And then I have a I have a new I need JTAG clip gear version two now that has the uh, little cutout for the capacitors. And so the idea with it is when you're trying to plug in your JTAG right from the bottom, you need your retainer clip, you just 3D print this little bit and it slides in between the ports like such. And it's kind of like a perfect pitch fit the board itself. And then you just plug in your tag connect in there, holds it, you got a nice little lever to pull it off when you're done with some sites. But there's, there is a version two now for, for a couple of people that have asked. So I just click on four. As the R5 uh, Zephyr stuff kind of cleans up, I think one of the things that we're going to package is microblocks. So we've we've got Arduino compatible overlay in, for Zephyr. And then so essentially you could, because the R5 can access the, the header pins, we can make a config where you can use Zephyr to program those. And then you can use the Arduino core on top of that and then use microblocks on top of that. So you could actually just kind of bundle just a really simple GUI for doing real-time I.O. stuff on the R5s, on the I.O. pens. There's some interesting things I could think of with Node-RED as well, since uh, Robert, I think you shipped the newer version of Node-RED, right? Yeah, we're uh, V4 is now shipping by default, so. Yeah, so V4.02, yeah. I have, so I have mixed opinions on Node-RED, but part of what is it is kind of easy to get running. It's there. Yeah. And it's nice because you can talk over RP message with the uh, with the R5, just if it's a real device, right? So. If you really wanted to, you could put totally no JS to, to the R5 core. The serial, I mean, if you already had a firmware load, right? Yeah. So we're um, wrapping up. We have some, we have some custom accessories that Seed's working on that are going to come out. There's a custom cooler, some custom enclosures for it as well. Just with, with some nice Beagle branding on there. It's going to be available at Micro Center at some point soon. Yep. I think we can, we can say that's been confirmed. So that's going to be exciting. Confirmed. I think there's, uh, I guess I can't, 
Yeah. Um, so definitely micro centers confirmed. There's also some other cool projects in the works that I, I don't know that I can talk really about. The there's, there's some get you in trouble this time. That's for, that's for the next next episode. There, there are many things that will bring you much joy if you get yourself a Beagle YAI. Grab one, go try to find one a distributor, keep refreshing the page if it's not there. And let us know how it goes. Give us feedback, open Beagle. Feel free to contribute. Uh, we're excited to see you on the Discord as always. And congratulations. Signing off. See y'all next time.